Clear. Good afternoon. It's Matt here with Semper Fly, and the weather finally got good enough for me to get down to the airport here, get a little work in in the pattern. I did a video a few weeks ago where I gave you five basic tail draggers for a decent price, and I talked a lot in that video about whether or not they were light sport or not. So I thought I'd do a video to clear up the basics when I say light sport about what I'm talking about in regards to these aircraft, and a little bit about the other options of what light sport aircraft means here in the United States. I say here in the United States because the rules do vary by country. You can have a light sport in France, but it's a different kind of airplane than what we have here. Let's start off by what do we mean by light sport aircraft? Many years ago, and by many years ago I basically mean back in the 90s, there was a whole class of aircraft that people commonly called ultralights. Ultralight has a particular definition according to the FAA. An ultralight is an aircraft that weighs less than 254 pounds. Many aircraft manufacturers started out as ultralights and then over time the airplanes grew and grew and while they were still called ultralights they grew to higher than 254 pounds and the FAA kind of overlooked this for a while. Whether something was or was not an ultralight was important because if it is an ultralight it's basically exempt from FAA rules meaning you don't have to have a pilot's license to fly it and the airplane doesn't have to be certified by any authority. If you were over 254 pounds, you were an aircraft according to the FAA and you were supposed to have a private pilot's license at least and the airplane was supposed to be certified under one of the airworthiness certificate rules, whether experimental or certified. The FAA realized that there were a lot of small airplanes that were bigger than ultralights but perhaps did not necessarily need the same type of regulation as a certified aircraft of larger what we call normal, util normal or utility certification like a Cessna 172 or a Piper Cherokee. Out of that process grew what became Sport Pilot and light sport aircraft. Sport Pilot was a, another pilot's license lower than a private pilot in the sense that uh, it did not require quite the extensive flight experience that a private pilot's license did. You didn't have to fly instruments or at night and there were some other rules too. They also created a class of aircraft that was meant for sport pilots, people with just a sport pilot license. And out of that process grew light sport aircraft as a new type of certification. What does the FAA consider a light sport aircraft? The first requirement, and the one that's generally the most important requirement, because this is the easy one, easiest one to run afoul of, is the weight. A light sport aircraft cannot weigh any more than 1,320 pounds. Higher than 1,320 pounds, it is not a light sport, and therefore you're under the private pilot rules and the additional certification rules. You're basically, you're like a 172 Cessna or something like that. There is a higher weight limit of 1,430 pounds for seaplanes. Basically, you're 1,320 pounds plus floats is what it amounts to. The second requirement is your maximum stall speed cannot be any higher than 45 knots. Now, my Cessna 172, depending upon how it was configured, would stall around 50 knots, maybe a little less if you really worked at it. So that was right on the cusp, but of course it was too heavy. My Cub here, 
I'm not really sure where at stall speed is because my airspeed doesn't work below 40 miles an hour and my airplane flies below 40 miles an hour. So this stall speed is probably somewhere around 38, 40 miles an hour. But the maximum stall speed for a light sport aircraft can't be any more than 45 knots. The next requirement is the maximum cruise speed of 120 knots, which equates to 140 miles an hour. The airplane can possibly physically go faster than 120 knots, such as if you point it down, but the maximum level cruise speed must be limited to 120 knots or less. The airplane must have a maximum of two seats, can't have three seats, can only have one engine, you can't have multi-engine light sport aircraft. You must have a fixed pitch propeller. The propeller has different pitch on bigger airplanes where you can modify the pitch of the propeller constant speed propeller, variable pitch propeller, a lot of airplanes like Piper Arrows and on up from that, basically any airplane almost with more than about 200 horsepower probably is going to have a variable pitch propeller. However, light sport does not allow you to have a variable pitch propeller. You can have what's called a ground adjustable propeller, which is a propeller where you can take a screwdriver or some tool and adjust the pitch of the propeller when the motor stopped for a setting to use setting continuous in flight. You can't have that. A lot of Rotaxes have ground adjustable propellers but you basically have a fixed pitch propeller as a light sport aircraft. For somewhat obvious reasons, your cabin must be unpressurized. You can't have a pressurized cabin. I've never seen that as a significant concern amongst light sport pilots if they weren't pressurized. I can't get high enough in my cup to worry about such things. And, and lastly, you must have fixed landing gear. There is one small exception to that. If you are in a seaplane or float plane light sport, you can have a particular ability to retract one of the wheels to land on water. But generally speaking, you can't have a retractable light sport. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically talk about light sport in regards to three different broad categories. The first category is experimental light sport. There are a whole bunch of kits you can buy to build your own light sport aircraft. And while I was really into experimental aviation for a while, I'm not really going to talk about the experimental light sport aircraft category right now. The second category is what I call newly certified light sport. These are aircraft that has been built for particular to be certified under the FAA's new light sport rules as they have existed just recently. You have aircraft like the Zodiac, various types of Cub Crafters aircraft, Europa XS. Pipistrelle has a couple different versions of these airplanes. Some of them look really cool. And then of course the certified built Vans RV-12. I wasn't going to talk about the newly manufactured aircraft like the Pipistrelle and Europa that were designed to be certified under these new rules. They're very fancy. Some of them are very nice. My old hangar neighbor where I used to keep this airplane had a Pipistrelle, and that was a gorgeous airplane. It had a glass cockpit. Very, very nice. It bumped right up against the 120 knot rule as far as how fast you could cruise. It was a nice little airplane. It's faster than a 172 and much nicer than a 172. With that set of rules of what makes a light sport, it's obvious that many pre-light sport rule aircraft qualify as light sport. The FAA has provided a list of aircraft that were already certified manufactured aircraft that might have existed for decades that because of their design happened to fit the light sport rules. And the FAA provided a list so that if you own one of those airplanes and it's certified properly, it's a light sport aircraft. First one obviously is a Piper Cub. The maximum weight of a Piper Cub certification is 1,220 pounds, unless it's on floats. So any J3 that's certified as it's originally built is a light sport. Certainly not faster than 120 knots. It's not more than the weight limit. Only has two seats, fixed pitch prop, fixed landing gear. So we're light sport. Many Aronkas are light sport. The Aronka 11, which is more commonly referred to as a Chief, is a light sport aircraft. Now, a quick word about Aronka Champs. There are many versions of the Aronka Champ. The original versions around 1946, like I talked about on this page before, are obviously light sport. However, Aronkas were manufactured by several different manufacturers over the better part of about 50 or 60 years. Many of those are heavier than the 1,320 pounds. My mechanic here on this field, he has an Aronka Champ. It was built in the mid-50s. I don't remember the designation of it, but 
but its max weights over 1,400 pounds, so that's not light sport. You have various models of the Lumscombe 8. These are very nice airplanes. They have quite a following. They're pretty sprightly performing as compared to my Piper. A lot of them have been restored in absolutely gorgeous airplanes, and many of those are light sport. We mentioned before the Interstate Cadet one time. The Interstate Cadet was an airplane that was built during World War II to meet the growing need for the CPT program training of civilian pilots for the upcoming war to try and get a contact to try and get a contract to build these they eventually lost out in large part to the cub behind me you won't find many interstate cadets i've only seen one flying in my life but if you could find an interstate cadet they're light sport several models of the taylor craft i mentioned a couple of these in the video that i did last time a few other pipers are actually light sport such as the pa-11 PA-15, and a PA-17. These are all going to qualify as light sport as well. Not as many of those around as the J-3, but there's quite a few of them around still flying. I mentioned the Porterfield in the video a few weeks ago. Several models of the Porterfield will qualify for light sport. I mentioned briefly before about light sport being able to be flown with a sport pilot license. So if you only have a sport pilot license, you can buy a Cub and you're perfectly legal to fly. However, many light sport aircraft are flown by people like myself, and that is people who have a private pilot's license but are flying a light sport aircraft. And there are some advantages about how the FAA looks at the medical requirements for why that might be the case. A third class medical certificate is issued by something called an AME, an Aviation Medical Examiner, and is good depending upon your age for at least two years or possibly longer if you're under 40. They're not terribly hard to get, but there are quite a few medical conditions that will disqualify you for a third class medical certificate. Light sport aircraft allow you to fly under either a third class medical certificate or a light sport aircraft exemption to the third class medical certificate rules, which is having a valid current driver's license from any U.S. state. If you're flying under the light sport aircraft exemption and having a driver's license, you don't have to go get a medical certificate from an AME. Now the FAA rules as far as what are disqualifying conditions is the same. Something that disqualifies you for a third class medical certificate such as having a heart attack or being on antidepressants unless you're under the exemption or various other things are still generally disqualifying to fly under the light sport rules with a driver's license as well. So you are somewhat up to your own honesty as to whether or not you should be flying. But there is the added ease of not having to go to an AME every couple of years to get your medical certificate renewed. One caveat about operating under the driver's license rule, however, is you are only eligible to operate a light sport aircraft under the driver's license exemption if your third class medical was never revoked or suspended or denied. So let's say you had a third class medical certificate and you had a Cessna 172 and you're flying along and you're happy and you go in to renew your medical certificate and the AME discovers something about your medical condition that is disqualifying and he denies recertifying your third class medical certificate. That denial now means that you are ineligible to fly under the driver's license rule. Let's take the exact same pilot who has the 172 and he just lets his medical certificate expire at the end of its duration, say two years. Now he goes out and he buys a light sport aircraft. He can fly the light sport aircraft under the driver's license rule because his previous medical certificate expired instead of being denied. The condition underlying which might have caused his certificate to be revoked or denied still might be disqualifying, so perhaps he still shouldn't fly However, you don't have that overlook over your shoulder about, I wonder if this is going to get me grounded or not. And honestly, I'm sure there are people flying under the driver's license exemption who have a condition that if an AME knew about it, would deny or revoke their privileges. And they probably shouldn't be flying. However, it is an added benefit to not have to worry about going in to get your medical certificate every couple years. I hope that makes sense. I hope that helps you understand that when I talk about light sport, you understand what I'm talking about. We're talking about airplanes of a particular weight and stall speed and seats and speed, which is under an FAA certification that allows you to fly under a driver's license exemption. It's an easier, cheaper way to get into the air. Not necessarily cheap, but cheaper. 
there are lots of people who when they start to get up in their ages and they start to have concerns that they're going to go in and get a medical certificate denied by something that they don't know about, they will get a Piper Cub or an Aronka and they'll continue to fly under the driver's license exemption and they'll keep flying. As long as they don't have something that comes to their knowledge that they know is a disqualifying condition, that's perfectly legal and keeps a lot of people in the air. Of course, it depends on what kind of flying you want to do. If you want to get a Cessna or a Piper and get instrument rated, fly off in the middle of the night across country, well, you're not generally going to do that in a, a light sport. You're generally l limited to visual flight rules, two seats, kind of slow, kind of small airplane. So if you want to go out on sunny days like I do and fly around up and down the beach and stuff, light sport fits your needs. To me, there's an interest in being involved in an old classic aircraft, which is kind of cool, and that's why I do it. As far as I know, I could get a third class medical certificate and get a Cessna 172 and keep flying, but that's not really the type of flying I'm interested in doing right now. Keep in mind that these rules do vary from country to country. However, two things of interest, Bahamas and Mexico. Bahamas and Mexico will allow you to fly in their country on a U.S. light sport. So I could get my Piper Cub and fly to the Bahamas. It's only about 38 miles off the coast at one point, so that would not be that big of a deal. Don't plan on doing that now, maybe one day. But other countries, while they might have different light sport rules, several countries will recognize the U.S. light sport. So even though you might not be eligible to be a light sport in that country, if you're U.S. certified in a U.S. airplane as light sport, you can fly there. Because I know light sport people do fly to Mexico when they fly to the Bahamas, and you could probably fly some other places if you actually looked into it. I hope that helps. I hope that answers some of your questions about the meaning of light sport. If you don't really have all the money to go ahead and get your private license, but you're interested in getting in the air, getting a sport pilot license will save you some money. And there are some pretty cool airplanes. Many of the certified light sport aircraft are just as fast as a 172. I, uh, I had a 172 for several years. I never had more than one other person in it. Had four seats, only used two passengers. So having two people flying at 110 miles an hour there's a lot of Cessna 172s that that's as fast as they go. So that's the kind of flying you want to do. Look into whether or not Sport Pilot and Light Sport fits your needs. As for now, thanks for watching. If you got an airplane, I'd love to hear about your experience with Light Sport. Or if you're in a country that has different rules, I'd like to hear how they do things differently. In the meantime, thanks for watching and keep flying. Thanks. <laughs>